I was legitimately finishing up putting on sunscreen to go outside. And then I thought, what's that sound? Go and look. Those are the pieces that I had been painting and left out to dry. After a lot of fighting with the rain, the upper back area is finally done. So for now, I think I'm gonna leave it like this. I just currently don't have the time, money, or resources to go ahead and continue finishing the back area. I just need to keep moving on. Now that back is finished, I can go ahead and put this up. This is the other shelf that'll be on the other side. You can see down here, I have these stops for the microwave so that it doesn't fall out during transit. I do have concerns about the weight of the microwave on here. I'll probably go ahead and tap into the, the ceiling here, maybe cut pieces off of some of the tiles around it. If I'd been smarter, I would have taped over that outlet cover so dust and debris doesn't get in. So I'm sitting here really like taking a look to see what the issue is with the microwave. Two things. One of the problems is cutting this area out here has compromised the integrity of the shelving supports. So what I'm gonna do is put another piece of wood going along the bottom instead to kind of help support that. Also, there's some bowing that you can definitely see right here. So I think bridging that gap will help as well. I went ahead and installed another piece of wood here, straightened it out significantly. Then over here, this piece of wood here, it does bow slightly. I purposely picked a piece of bowing wood to kind of help fight the weight of the microwave. This is significantly better. However, this kind of flaps a little bit. Howdy. Took a few days off to work on other projects and also clean up the garage and make it a little bit more hospitable. Maybe hospitable is the wrong word. I don't mean like for animals, I just mean for people. Currently I have some ceiling panels down to add in this support beam to help bear some of the weight of the microwave. Luckily there's a steel rib right there. I wish I could say I planned this, but it's a happy little accident. Okay, so I just finished hanging up the bathroom curtain. This looks good from a distance, maybe. And then you get close and you realize for a tiny, tiny space, that's two and three quarters of an inch of clearance away from the window. What I really need is something a lot more flush. I wish I could say that those are the only holes that I drilled for these mounts, but I already installed the one on the left side of the kitchenette. I installed the one on the right side of the kitchenette. But hey, what's a few more unnecessary holes in this build? <laughs> All right, I did a little bit of searching online and there's a guy that used some brass piping and I guess brass piping supports as curtain rods. And while that's certainly fine and it looks nice, I think that's a little more than I need for my build. I got the idea to go ahead and grab some wooden dowel rod, 3 8 inch, and some of these cup hooks here and put these in the wall and then use the dowel. Let me show you. So this is just wood dowel rod underneath the curtain and then these are some of those cup hooks and it gives a very flush mount. Now bear in mind I will be adding another cup hook towards the middle here and I'm going to be adding some kind of maybe wooden chip on the end to keep it from sliding left and right because otherwise it's just gonna fall out. Now it's crazy for me to think that after all the curtain rods are put up it will have only cost me right around $16 after tax. This was going to be the original curtain wire running around the bus and this while I originally paid $12.99 it is currently $16.99 on a Swedish furniture places website. So that means that it cost me just as much to outfit the entire bus with curtain rods as it does to buy one pack of curtain wire.